Hey guys, Matt from Amateur Filmies and welcome to a brand new video that I've been really excited to share with you guys. So if you've been following us for some time, you might know that the first ever video we did on this channel was an overview of our Arrow Video collection. And Arrow Video are by far my favorite boutique Blu-ray company to collect from. I just, I think they're amazing and I really love their catalog. But you know, that first video that we did came out in 2019 and it's 2021 now, obviously. So we've picked up a lot of titles since then. Um, the thing is though, even though we've done a lot of Blu-ray hauls and we've shown you some Arrow titles in the past, there's actually a lot of stuff in this collection that you guys wouldn't have seen before. Um, so like a lot of limited edition sets and out of print stuff. So um, I think you'll get a kick out of that. Just a couple of quick things to point out as well. In our original video, the way that we filmed it was, you know, Sarah and I were in front of the camera. We'd show you a movie like this and we'd unbox, you know, all the box sets and show you what's inside. Um, just for this video, I'm going to do it sort of more the traditional style and just film it POV shelf by shelf. Um, the main reason I'm doing that is because if I did it the way that I did in the original video, it would literally be like three or four hours long because there's that many box sets in this, vi in this video as you will see in a moment. Um, another thing to point out, um, there'll be timestamps down below. So, you know, for the box sets, the steel books, um, you know, we also going to go into Arrow Academy in this video as well. So you can skip to that if that's what you're interested in. Um, the other thing that I know will probably drive some of you guys crazy is that these aren't going to be organized very well. The only way that they're organized is by the format, uh, you know, the type of release it is. So like the box sets are first, then the steel books and then the rest of the stuff. Um, it's just because we, you know, we've only recently moved in here and our main focus was getting everything onto the shelf. Um, so we still have to set aside some time to actually readjust where certain movies are going. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, but yeah, apart from that, uh, thanks so much for checking out this video. It's still going to be quite long um, because I already actually have filmed the video. It's going to be about an hour long. So grab some popcorn, grab a drink or whatever you need to do and uh, sit back, relax and enjoy. So thanks again. All right. So thanks again, guys, for checking out this video. This here is the Arrow Video and Arrow Academy shelf. It goes from the very top there all the way down to the bottom. And so Arrow Academy starts down there and above it, we've got, you know, the Arrow Video box sets, which lead into the steel books and then the standard editions. Um, these are the other shelves here. You know, we've got some criteria, all the other boutique Blu-ray stuff's here, like C Criterion, Indicator, Screen Factory, all that stuff, which I'm sure we'll get to in another video in the future. Um, one thing I want to quickly point out before we get started is you'll notice that some of these box sets are facing outwards. Um, it's just a display choice. We think it looks really cool and we love displaying the artwork that way. But when it comes down to like showing them row by row, I'll probably tuck them in just so it's easier to pull the, each of the movies out and show you what we got. Um, but we'll start off at the very, very top. Don't mind the shakiness. This is actually a lot taller than it looks, so I apologize for that. So starting off here, we've got the Phantasm set. Um, really awesome collection of films. They're very odd. And I know that not everyone's into them, but I think they're pretty cool. Then here we've got the Hellraiser Scarlet Box, one of my favorite editions in the entire collection. I absolutely adore all three of these movies. Obviously the original is the best, but I still think the other two have charm to them as well. Following on, we've got the Vincent Price's Six Gothic Tales box set. And this was a new edition. Um, you probably wouldn't have seen this on our channel um, before now. This is the original limited edition set. Um, really, really glad to have this. We got this for a bargain price from Craig the Collector, who we've mentioned a few times on this channel, but really happy to have this. It's absolutely awesome. Next to that, we have the Demon set. We recently showed off this one. This is the new 4K edition, just trying to find a place for it. Um, but for now, it's just staying up there. Crimson Peak. This is a really interesting design choice as well. I actually quite like the film too. Uh, I do need to revisit it though. Battle Royale, this is the Blu-ray, uh, the original Blu-ray limited edition box set. Still undecided if I'm gonna get the 4K um, edition, but you know, I probably will cave and get it, but also movie as well. And here we have the gigantic Gamera set. I've um, been waiting to get into these films. I'm, I wanna see them with Sarah's brothers because I think we'd all get a kick out of them. Um, but yeah, that is a crazy edition to have. It's huge and we actually got it at retail price, thankfully, because this one goes for a lot of money nowadays. Okay, so start at the top row. Here we have Macabre Visions, the films of Mario Bava. Um, Zavi almost screwed me on this one. They, uh, I pre-ordered this the second it was announced and they didn't have stock of it for ages. I almost missed out, but they have came through in the end. But yeah, one of the many bad encounters I've had with Zavi, it all started here with this set. <laughs> Dario Argento's Phenomena. Um, probably up there is one of my favorite from him. Although one thing that holds this film back for me is the score. Um, I don't know how people feel about it, but the heavy metal soundtrack for me just feels really, really out of place. It takes me out of the film a little bit. I like, obviously, that type of music, but it just, for me, it just doesn't really fit with this movie. 
Bird with the Crystal Plumage, um, his directorial debut, if I'm remembering correctly, and I, I am getting the 4K edition of this. Uh, really, really solid effort for a directorial debut. This is a really good GLO film. Deep Red. A lot of people say this is their favourite Argento film, and it's hard to argue with that. For me, it's still Suspiria, but this one is also up there as one of my favourite from him. Must see GLO film if you're new to the genre. Definitely, it's a good one to start with. Cat of Nine Tales, um, one of his lesser talked about films, you know, from his early career, this still Argento, of course. Um, this one's pretty good. Um, I, as I said, I prefer the other ones that I've shown so far, but yeah, I'm glad to have this one too. And this is the Black Cat set. Um, this one comes with two films, uh, The Black Cat, which is directed by Lucio Fulci, and Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. Um, very long title, but yeah, uh, I've seen The Black Cat, so I need to get around to watching Your Vice is a Locked Room, but... Black Cat's all right, you know, hit or miss with Fulci, but you know how it is. <laughs> City of the Living Dead. This one is one of my favorite Fulci films. This one is insane. Really love the gore effects in this one in particular. Death Walks Twice, two Giallo films from Luciano Ocoli. I was able to get that one when it came back in stock on Arrow's website a couple of years ago. And same with this one, Killer Dames, um, comes with two films as well. Um, the Night Evelyn, Evelyn Came Out of the Grave and uh, The Red Queen Kills Seven Times. A lot of Italian films have really long titles. <laughs> um, this is the original uh, limited edition box set for Old Boy, which also includes Sympathy for Mr. Vengeance and Lady Vengeance. I adore all three of those films. I think they're fantastic. Old Boy is probably my favourite, which I'm sure a lot of people would agree with, but um, the other two should not be talked down. I, I think they're really good as well. Uh, this is the Ring Collection. Um, this is the original uh, set that comes with the book as well. Um, Sarah in particular loves all three of these, and I have to say I do as well. Uh, staples in any J-horror collection. This is a newer pickup. Um, this is Graveyard of Honor. This comes with the original uh, Kinji Fukasaku film and the Takashi Miike remake, so two great directors. I've seen both. have to say I prefer um, the original, but I, Takashi Miike's effort's pr still pretty good. Outlaw Gangster VIP. I have to admit, I still need to get to watching a few of these, um, but this one is also long out of print, um, hard to get your hands on. If you see it for a good price, definitely grab it. Um, here we have the Sage and Suzuki early years. This is volume one and also volume two. These are really great value sets as well. Unfortunately, they are out of print as well. I am not can't remember if they have standard editions of these. I don't think so, but you get a lot of his films in here, which is really cool. And my favorite box set, or yeah, it's a big call, but this is one of my favorite box sets of last year. Uh, the uh, Solid Metal Nightmares, the films of Shinya Tsukamoto. I love Tetsuo the Iron Man and the second one as well. I think it's really cool. But in general, he's a fantastic director. And to have so many of his films included in this box set is just a treat for me. All right, start of this shelf is Kinji Fukasaku's Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the complete collection. I recently posted an Instagram picture of me holding this because I was so happy to finally get it. This is um, one of my holy grail items. Spent a decent chunk of change on it, I'm not going to lie, but I actually still got a good deal on it if you compare it to the prices that other editions of this go for. Um, we technically got it at a really cheap price, but still more than I was <laughs> keen on paying. But, you know, sometimes you've got to make sacrifices for the ones that you really want in your collection. Um, this is the companion piece, uh, New Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the complete trilogy. I'm so happy to have these box sets finally together because I've had this one for a really long time, um, but this set had eluded me for so long. Glad to finally have this one. Um, this is the Female Prisoner Scorpion set. This is the original limited edition, but this was reissued in a standard box set, which is really cool of Arrow to do. Um, again, I actually recently rewatched um, the first film, Female Prisoner 701 Scorpion. Very stylistic film. Um, there is some pretty graphic violence and some other shady stuff going on in the film, but uh, on the whole, I really enjoyed it for what it is. But uh, as I'm going to say for a few of these other films, it's not for everyone. Donnie Darko, this is the original Blu-ray limited edition box set. Um, yet another one that's getting a 4K upgrade from Arrow. Don't think I'll upgrade that one. I think this edition's fine, but you know, it's just, it's really hard to keep up with all the 4K box sets getting announced, like especially when they're reissues of films they've already done um, box sets of in the past. Stuart Gordon's Reanimator, um, amazing zombie film. I really love this one. Jeffrey Combs is amazing in it as well. And yeah, just a really, really great film on, on the whole. And this is the follow-up Bride of Reanimator. Not quite as good, um, but I still think it's actually really, really fun. I do enjoy revisiting that one when I watch this one as well. Brian Yuzna's Society. And if I'm remembering correctly, this is probably my first ever Arrow Video box set. 
um, I love the design on this. Like, I don't know, you won't be able to pick it up on camera, but this actually is sort of textured. It's like you can feel the cover. Um, pretty gross, but I'm not going to spoil that film. But if you haven't seen it, check it out because that is an, an insane whack movie. Robocop, um, absolute classic. You know, I rewatched this one again semi recently and just loved it all the same. It's just such a good film. If I'm remembering correctly, I think the director did Starship Troopers as well, which would be an awesome uh, title for Arrow to pick up. John Carpenter's The Thing. You know, what can I say about this film? Absolute masterpiece, one of his, one of John Carpenter's best and definitely one of my favourites from him. Carrie from Brian De Palma. Um, I, I think this this set's long out of print as well, but I really, really love this film. I, On the whole, I do like Stephen King adaptations, but that is one of the better ones out there. Clive Barker's Nightbreed. Um, picking up this edition was a first time watch for me and I'm, I was a bit mixed on it when I first watched this one, I'm not going to lie. Um, this is, I'm, I'm probably going to benefit from watching this again because as I said, I, I couldn't tell if I liked it or not when I first saw that. I know it's, yeah, it's a bit of a strange one. This one's Creepshow 2. Um, I used to think, I, I used to really like this movie. I watched it again and I didn't like it as much as I thought I did. It, it's good. Um, obviously, the first creep show is a lot better. But, yeah, I'm still glad to have it. Like, you know, it's, it is one that I'll rewatch again. But, yeah, just not as good as the first one. American Werewolf in London. This is such a good horror film. I'm sure most of you have seen this one. But if you haven't, definitely check it out. Horror classic. Horror comedy classic. Candyman. This, another horror classic. This one is absolutely awesome. I'm really interested to see what the remake of this... I don't know if it's... I can't remember if it's like a remake or a reboot or a sequel to the original. I don't know what's going on with it, but um, the original Candyman is obviously awesome. Waterworld. Um, the massive... <laughs> the film with a massive budget that didn't quite make it back. Um, I Sarah has seen this one. I haven't. I still need to get around to watching it, but... Um, yeah, this one is also, I think this one's pretty sought after as well, but glad to have that one. Sarah quite enjoys it. The Complete Dr. Fives. This is another one I don't think you guys would have seen on our channel. This is also one that we got from Craig. Um, really, really glad to have this set because this is quite rare and hard to find. And obviously the movies are good too. Shock Treatment. This is like, I really don't like the packaging on this one. Um, pretty sure this one is readily available as a standard edition. You might even be able to find the limited set because I don't know how popular that release was, but yeah, it's, it's all right. <laughs> and we've shown this one off recently, Tremors. I absolutely adore this film. I've seen this, I don't know how many times I've seen this movie and to see that Arrow finally put out an awesome box out of it, I knew that I had to snatch this one up straight away. Okay, so we've got some York Book right films to start us off here on this row. We've got Necromantic. Um, this is a very disturbing movie, unsurprisingly, and if you're into disturbing movies, you probably have heard of this one. Um, this one did take me by surprise, though. I was expecting something a bit cookie-cutter, like, you know, just a plain old gross-out disturbing movie. And it is gross, and it is disturbing, but um, took me by surprise with, like, the editing and the use of music. It's quite short as well, but, yeah, definitely an oddity. Not one that I could ever really recommend in good conscience, but, yeah, I'm glad to own it, that's for sure. I uh, can't really say the same for the second one, though. This one is... Look, they're both bad, but this one felt a lot more mean-spirited than the first one. That's that's what I remember of it anyway. I've only seen it the once, and it was quite a while ago. But, um, yeah, it didn't really have the, I guess, uniqueness of the first one. And just, yeah, it wasn't really a fan of what happened in the movie. Uh, Toad's King. Uh, this is a cool uh, edition, actually, from Arrow. I, I unboxed this in our original Arrow video thing. It has really cool contents. Um, it's a really cool release. It's got, like, uh, some of the letters in the film. Um, they sort of reproduced them and included it in the set, which is really cool. Shram. Um, this is another short movie. I believe it is also only like 60 something minutes long, um, based on like a serial killer type character. Um, very violent, very gory. Um, it's not too bad. Um, I, I really like when films are only like 60 something minutes because, you know, even if I end up hating it, it's not really much of a time investment, but I actually didn't mind this movie. Um, it has been a while though. Bloodbath, um, another interesting release from Arrow because one thing of note is that this actually includes a lot of different cuts of the same movie. Like, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head how long they run for, but they vary, like, by a big degree. Like, sometimes they'll include different cuts of a movie, and it's, like, two minutes difference, whereas this one's, like, they're wildly different from one another. So that's really cool. Uh, George Romero, Between Night and Dawn. This one comes with uh, Season of the Witch. Um, there's always is always Vanilla. I always forget. How, yeah, there's always Vanilla and The Crazies. Most people would have probably picked this up for The Crazies or, you know, and Season of the Witch, but, yeah, all those films are quite fun. Um, the Crazies are definitely my favourite out of that set, though. 
Alejandro Jodorowsky. Um, the films in here include Fando Ali, El Topo, The Holy Mountain, and Psycho Magic, A Healing Art, the documentary. Uh, I really wish Santa Sangre was included in this, but I do have the Severin, uh, the Severin, but you know, the Severin release of that. Um, but yeah, that would have made this box set even better in my opinion, but still really cool set. He's a very interesting filmmaker. And I just realized that's the end of the Arrow Video box set, so we're about to move into the still books now. So the first one here is White of the Eye. Um, this one has been out for a really long time, but I think you can still get this. Uh, I think it's still pretty readily available, actually. I don't, it mustn't have been a very popular film because I still very regularly see that uh, for retail price. Uh, Blade of the Immortal. Um, this is a fairly recent film from Takashi Miike. This is a very fun movie. I could be mistaken. I think it actually might be based on a manga or, or an anime or something. I'm not too sure, but yeah, very violent, very awesome. Maniac Cop. This was directed and written by, I always forget his name. I think it's William Lustig. He's the creator. He's the guy behind uh, Blue Underground. Um, there's, I think, three of these films. I'm not crazy on them. I think they're fun, but um, some people are definitely bigger fans of this than I am. Uh, Ring. So this is a double dip. You know, we've got the original box set up there from the original. Um, Sarah insisted we pick up this steelbook because, you know, she loves the film and so do I and can't really argue with that design. I really like this steelbook. King of New York. Um, this one's directed by Abel Ferrara. Really cool performances by Christopher Walken and Lawrence Fishburne. Um, yeah, very fun movie, actually. Drilly Killer's more of a lower budget sort of slasher film. It's one's not too bad. Uh, Blood and Black Lace. So recently we showed off the standard edition of this, actually. Um, and not long after we showed this on camera, we actually saw this on Facebook for a really, really cheap price. So we knew that we had to upgrade. I'm just going to chuck him up there for now. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dario, Argen Dario Argento's Inferno. This is the follow-up to Suspiria, actually. Uh, not as good as Suspiria, and it's probably mid middle of the range for Dario Argento's films, in my opinion, but it's still not too bad. I really like the set pieces in this, in particular the opening underwater sequence. Uh, Blowout. This one's directed by Brian De Palma, starring John Travolta and Nancy Allen. This one was a really cool film. This is a first-time watch for me when I picked up this edition, and it actually put me on a Brian De Palma kick for a while, so definitely recommend that one for sure. Very weird sci-fi space vampire movie directed by Toby Hooper. This is a cool release, and um, this one is obviously out of print now, but if you want to get a still book of this movie, I'm pretty sure uh, Screen Factory have a release still available. And here we have The Burning. Uh, this is an awesome slasher movie. It came out, I think, 1981, the same year that Friday the 13th came out. And it's very commonly uh, compared to that film because, you know, as I said, same year, they're both slasher films and they're both also set in, like, the woods near a camp. Um, I do actually prefer The Burning, I'd have to say, actually. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty solid slasher film. Sorry about all the shuffling. Um, Lucio Fulci's The Beyond. Uh, my favourite Fulci film by far. I just, I love the nightmare sequences in this, the gore, um, everything. There's just... I don't know. There's something about this movie that really does it for me. I think it's fantastic. Um, very, <laughs> it's hard to recommend Lucio Fulci films, but if you're going to give at least one of them a try, I think The Beyond is a pretty good one. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. This is the 1970s version. Um, there is the original, I think, from like the 50s, but there's also like a 90s remake of this. But yeah, this is the 70s one, and I really love this movie. I think it's a body horror classic. Um, very, very creepy at times for sure. Uh, Foxy Brown. So when it comes to the black exploitation genre, this is probably one of the ones that's talked about the most. Obviously, this is Pam Greer. Um, she was in quite a few black exploitation movies, and I think this is probably the one she was most well known for. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This is a, such a fun time. Um, definitely watch this with a group of friends, um, but I enjoy re-watching this very, very frequently. It's just, it's so wacky. I love the effects, the costuming, just everything in this movie is awesome. Here we got Time Bandits by um, Terry Gilliam. Not my favorite Terry Gilliam film. You know, I do love his films, but this is probably one that I, I wouldn't really be re-watching anytime soon. Like, I, I'll watch it again, but I, I'm more likely to watch something else that he's done before I get back to this one. Um, here we've got Shivers and also uh, Rabid, um, two films from uh, David Cronenberg's earlier career in the 70s. Um, he obviously did a few, th like, few shorts and stuff before these films, but... Um, from my understanding of his timeline, um, these are the films that sort of started to get him more noticed. Um, very cool films. I actually quite enjoy them as well. 
Dario Argento's Tenebrae. A lot of people say this is their favorite as well, actually. Um, and this is definitely top five for me too. It's very, very violent. That's uh, It's been a while since I've watched it, admittedly, but I recall this. I do recall this being a lot more violent than some of his other Giallo films. Obviously, he's got violence in all of his Giallo films, but in particular, I thought this one was um, pretty graphic compared to those other ones. Uh, the Burbs. This is such an amazing film. I've seen this, I don't know how many times, probably like well over 20 or 30 times. I've been seeing this since I was a kid. This is absolutely hilarious. It used to terrify me as a kid, actually. But Tom Hanks, Bruce Stern, Corey Feldman, they're all fantastic in this movie. I can't remember who it's directed by. It might be yeah, it's Joe Dante, I thought so. Um, definitely check that one out. It's awesome. As is this movie, uh, Audition, by, directed by Takashi Miike, who, again, is one of my favorite directors. This is a really... Uh, I've seen a lot of people pick this up recently in Blu-ray holes and stuff. It's uh, I always get a kick out of seeing people buy this one because I know they're going to be in for like a wild ride. Um Considered one of Mike's best, and I agree. I think it is one of his best films. Phantom of the Paradise, um, directed by Brian De Palma. Again, I mentioned with Blowout that I was on a bit of a Brian De Palma kick. And I wanted to give this one a try. Uh, not my favorite from him by any stretch of the imagination, but it's still decent. And um, yeah, I'm glad to have it in the collection, that's for sure. And last on this row is Big Trouble in Little China, directed by John Carpenter. This one is my favorite from John Carpenter, my favorite film by him. I just, there's so many things in this movie that just do it for me. I love the tone of this film, the style, the performances, the comedy, the action, just everything in this movie is just brilliant. I've seen this one as well. I've been watching this since I was a kid. I, I don't know how many times I could, I've seen this, probably 30, 40 times at least. Starting on this shelf, we've got Demons and also Demons 2. I'm probably going to hold on to this edition because even though we have the 4K box set, I really like the design of this steel book. And yeah, also I like the movies a lot. So um, Zombie Flesh Eaters. A lot of people say this is their favorite Lucio Fulci film. And this is definitely up there. Probably my second favorite, actually, um, without overthinking it. Um, classic zombie film. And it's one of those good examples of how Italian, some Italian films like to rip off or you know capitalize on Hollywood productions like it goes by Zombie Flesh Eaters, but it's also known as Zombie 2, and it was mas marketed as a sequel to Dawn of the Dead, which is known as just Zombie in Italy. So I thought that was it's always an interesting fact to share. Microwave Massacre. Um, this movie is exactly what you would think it is. It's um, low-budget horror, and, you know, depending on the type of person you are, this is either going to be really fun or a massive slog to get through. I'm glad to have it in the collection. I think it's, it's pretty funny, and... You know, I watched this with my brother and my dad and they both thought it was hilarious, but also I don't know if my dad was too impressed with it, if I'm being honest. <laughs> um, Madman. Um, need to get around to watching this one. It's supposed to be a really great early 80s slasher. I just haven't found the time to watch it yet. Um, need to get around to it though. Um, and I probably already mentioned it at the start of the video, but just in case I haven't, it'll become very clear very quickly that there are a decent amount of these that I still need to get around to watching. Um, you know how it is as a collector where, you know, you just, you end up buying more than you have time to watch. Um, one of Sarah and I's goals for this year is to make a big dent in our watch list, you know, from, for films in our collection that we have, we are yet to see. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out because yeah, some of these I've still yet to get to such as the Slayer. I got this one because, um, you know, it's an narrow video slasher, but I have heard it's not as good as some of the other ones in their catalog. You know, I figured I'd just give it a try. I got that one during a sale. Most of these ones I get during the sale. Um, the Initiation. It's been a while since I've watched this one, but I do recall enjoying it. Uh, I really should watch that one again soon, though. Scared Stiff. This is another one I haven't seen yet. I got this one because the costume effects uh, looked really, really cool, like based on the stills from some of the um, stuff that Arrow shared when they first announced this title, so I took a chance on it. Haven't seen it yet, though, as I said. The Exterminator. I watched this one maybe halfway through last year, and I thought it was pretty average, um, pretty forgettable, to be honest. I may, look, I should, would probably benefit from watching it again, um, but yeah, I don't know. It, I wasn't really impressed with it um, the first time that I saw it. Uh, Doom Asylum. I got this one based on the Arrow Video podcast. Apparently, it's one of those so bad it's good kind of movies. It's supposed to be pretty crazy. Haven't watched it yet, but hopefully I do soon. Sorry about all these things falling over. Uh, Colobos. Now this one was a, this is an interesting one. So this one came out in the nineties, if I'm not mistaken. And, um, it's, it's like a, it's a low budget slasher film, but the concepts in here are quite interesting actually. And I really enjoyed it. Um, it's one of those cases where even though you can tell they had a small budget, they did a pretty good job of using it, if that makes sense. Um, I do recommend checking that one out. It's worth, worth a try. 
Motel Hell. This is a really fun film. Um, I, I first heard of this when I was watching Cool Dude's videos like probably eight or nine years ago and he would always talk about how much he really likes this film and when I started collecting boutique Blu-rays, I saw that Arrow had this so I picked it up and I enjoyed it as well. I thought it's, it's really good fun. Blood Rage. Uh, need to get around to watching this one. I think this is the one with the twins and they're not really sure which one of them is killing people if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, need to watch that one still. Okay, and as I said, obviously the reason there's so many big gaps in these shelves is just because normally they were front, they were forward facing. Um, you know, normally it's a lot more fuller than this, so I do apologize for the shuffling around. Um, but here we have Day of the Dead uh, in this window box edition. I really love these window box editions. I wish they they sort of still did them because you know you get four different artworks to display. Sarah bought this one for me as a gift and actually has Tom Savini's signature on one of the covers, which is really really awesome. Um, probably my favorite of the Romero zombie trilogy as well. Zombie for Sale this is a really new um, zombie film, obviously. This is, uh, Sarah really, really enjoyed this one, and I quite enjoyed it too. We watched it with her brothers, and they were fond of it. I, I can never remember if this is Japanese or South Korean. I think it's South Korean. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting film. I actually quite like this one. Worth a try if you're into zombie films. Branded to Kill, directed by Seijin Suzuki. I'm annoyed at myself that I haven't seen this one yet because this is a lot of people say that this is their favorite of um, his films and it's supposed to be really interesting stylistically. So um, I really want to watch that one sometime soon. Dead or Alive trilogy. This is directed by Takashi Miike, so you already know that I'm going to say good things about it. Um, yeah, trilogy of films in here, really good value set, and I'm pretty sure you can still get this from the Video website. Um, I like, I really like the films. They're you know crazy action stuff. It's always a good time to watch those. Uh, Nikatsu Diamond Guys Volume Two. So I haven't watched these ones yet. This was more of an opportunistic buy for me because um, these this the Nikatsu Diamond Guys sets is a volume one and two. I'm pretty, they were both limited. And um, yeah, I just I found the idea of them pretty interesting because if I'm remembering correctly, I think these are like noir films from like the 60s and they all came out of the Nikatsu, Nikatsu studio and I wanted to learn more about that. So I thought that was a good way to uh, learn more about it. Uh, Cops vs. Thugs, we got this one very recently, so I haven't had a chance to watch this one, um, but very excited to. I've heard good things actually about that one. Mask of Gun, um, again, I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen this one yet, but I hope to get around to watching it soon. Um, and also here we have Dark Water. This is a great, great J-horror film from 2002, if I'm not mistaken. I think its alternative title is Cairo. No, that's, that's sorry, that's for Pulse. Um, but yeah, Dark Water, really, really great J-horror film. Very, very creepy. Some of the sequences in that are absolutely nightmare-inducing. Um, I don't know how the American remake is. Sarah's seen it, and I'm pretty sure she hates the American remake, but that is a pretty good film. So here we have a new title, actually. Um, I think Sarah talked about this in her last video, uh, JSA or Joint Security Area, directed by uh, Park Chan-wook. This is a great film. This is such a pleasant surprise. Sorry, it wasn't a surprise because I hadn't known about this film for a long time, but just never really had the means to watch it. And when Arrow announced this, I was so excited. And I'm really happy really happy to report that this is brilliant. Um, we'll definitely be re-watching this very soon in the future because it is such a good film. Definitely check this one out. Oh, my shoulder is killing me. I don't know how you guys do this. <laughs> um, the Sister Street Fighter Collection. Um, supposed to be really cool films. I've been, that sounds dumb, but I was waiting to watch these ones after I'd acquired the uh, regular Street Fighter Collection that I think Screen Factory put out. Um, I probably shouldn't wait on getting that because I don't know when I'll get them, but um, they're supposed to be pretty decent films, actually. Again, the Arrow Video Podcast did an interesting episode about that. The Happiness of the Katakuris. What a brilliant cover this is. Again, directed by Takashi Miike. Uh, this, i got to find other words to describe his films other than just wacky and crazy, but that really does apply with this film. It's like a music drama, musical drama, horror, comedy. I, I can't even start to begin to describe this bloody film. Um, crazy film. Really, really enjoyed it, though. Sarah was a bit weirded out by the puppetry at the start. She doesn't really like that sort of claymation stuff i can't yeah i can't remember the type of animation it is but she ended up enjoying it for its zaniness it was good it's a really cool one sorry had to cut there for a sec uh terraformers again directed by takashi Miike. um yeah I, I definitely do have a few of his films in our collection this one came in i think 2016 and is an adaptation of a manga or an anime again i believe um this one was not received well by the public and it it isn't a great movie but it's just it is such a 
it's it, you can tell it has a massive budget, um, but the effects that we use in this film and like the I don't man I have, I always have a lot of trouble describing Takashi Miike's films, but even though I can recognize that this wasn't a great film, there was something about it. Maybe it was its high production quality. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but I, I actually really enjoyed this film. Um, it's not going to be for everyone, though. It's I can see why people don't like it, put it that way. Um, this one I haven't gotten around to watching yet, Orgies of Edo. Um, I don't really know too much about this one. This was, again, a blind buy. Um, I think the director of this has also put out a couple of other films that Arrow have released recently. But, um, yeah, I think it's it's sort of like an anthology film, if I'm remembering correctly. But I need to, still need to watch it. Wolf Guy. Um, I really love the premise of this, um, but yeah, I haven't watched this one yet, but it definitely sounds like one I'm going to enjoy. Um, based, yeah, it, as you can imagine, based on the title, it is like a werewolf cop drama movie. Horrors of Malformed Men, um, directed by, I can never remember how, remember how to say his name, Ter no, I'm not even going to try. Um, I got this one based on the, the effects, similar to what I said about Scared Stiff. Um, the costuming and the effects looked really interesting. And also like based on the trailer, it seemed like it was going to be a very dark and atmospheric film. Haven't seen it yet. I'm ashamed to say, but I really look forward to seeing this one. Finally, here we have pulse or Cairo, as I meant, as I mistakenly said about dark water, this is a really interesting J horror film. It's not um, your typical one. I would say it, it has a lot to say about like technology um, and from memory correctly, even social media, again, as I've said with a few of these films, it's been a while, so I don't want to say to anything too inaccurate, but I, I really did like this one. Um, I thought it was quite an ambitious film. This one's a semi-recent pickup, uh, the one Miss Call trilogy, um, Takashi Miike again, he directed the first one and Sarah and I watched that when we, uh, when we first got this copy, Sarah had seen it, um, but I hadn't, and I actually really liked it, um, it has that, you know, sort of bigger budget J horror feel, um, I guess, you know, that has that feel that was typical of the J horror films that came out in the early 2000s. I quite liked it. And some of the scenes were especially creepy, which is good. Um, I don't know how the follow-up films to the original were received. I don't think they're supposed to be as good, but I'm sure we will check them out sometime soon. Sarah's definitely very keen on those in particular. Before We Vanish, I bought this one because it was directed by Kiyoshi Kurosawa, who also did Pulse. Um, this one came out, I think, in the late 2000s or maybe, you know, the 2010s or something. Uh, haven't seen it yet, though. Um, it's supposed to be an interesting one, though, based on what I've read. And here we have The Villainess. This was a great high-impact action film. Um, I really loved the opening of this film. If I'm remembering correctly, it was the uh, POV um, real like big action sequence. I thought it was awesome. Um, it's, I really liked the world that they were building in this as well. Um, I've only seen it the once, but I was actually quite impressed with it. And my, from memory, it was a little bit long. Uh, it's only two hours, but yeah, um, this one was definitely worth watching. I'd give this one a try for sure. Just become a little bit more wary of the time. So I'm just going to speed things up just a little bit. Um, this here is the Black Society trilogy. Um, three films yet again directed by Takashi Miike. These are sort of more traditional gangster films as opposed to the uh, more out there uh, dead or alive films that I showed earlier. Um, Street Mobster. I've seen a few YouTubers say really good things about this one. So I need to check it out. As is the case with Doberman Cop. Um, Edge of the X. This is a pretty decent slasher directed by Jose Larraz. Um, it's a Spanish production with American actors, if I'm remembering correctly. And even though it is rated 15, um, this is a pretty brutal slasher film. Deadly Manor, also directed by Jose Larraz. Sorry about the glare there. The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion. Um, GLO title back again with the long name. Uh, Pajama Girl Case. This is a GLO film set in Australia, actually. House by the Cemetery. Um, this is another film in the Gates of Hell trilogy by Lucio Fulci. It's my, probably my least favourite in the trilogy, but it's still quite entertaining. Uh, Milano Calibro 9. This was a pleasant surprise, actually. I took a chance on this. Um, it's basically, it's part of the subgenre of films called the Polizia Teschi films, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, basically, it's like Italian cop drama films, and this is a really good entry point, I think, so it's very entertaining. The Bloodstained Butterfly. City of the Walking Dead, also known as Nightmare City. This is one of Sarah's favorite Italian zombie films, actually, and I really enjoy it as well. It's directed by Umberto Lenzi, who I'm a huge fan of. 
and Eaten Alive, directed by Toby Hooper. Toby Hooper, excuse me. And moving along, we have The Case of the Scorpion's Tale, directed by Sergio Martino. Um, this is a pretty good Giallo film. I had read really good things about it, and when I watched it, I was a little bit let down, but on the whole, it was still quite good and definitely worth checking out. Um, the Iguana with the Tongue of Fire, directed by Ricardo Freire. The Suspicious Death of a Minor, yet again directed by Sergio Martino. What Have You Done to Solange? This is a really gr um, a really gritty, dark, giallo film with some really brutal moments, actually. It deals with a lot of really dark subject matter as well. Um, I really recommend that one, actually. Got a few De Palma films here. So first off, we've got Obsession. Um, this is the Italian alternative artwork. Um, this is actually quite good. I always forget his name, but it stars the guy who plays Uncle Ben in the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. Um, Sisters. Uh, I didn't like this one as much as Obsession, but it is still quite good. Um, Criterion also have an edition of this out. Dressed to Kill. This is a really fun film from Brian De Palma. Um, Michael Caine does a, has a really good performance in this one, actually. Um, Fury. Uh, this is one of my not as favorite, no, it's, that was a dumb way to say it, um, of the De Palma films that I have, um, this is one that I'll probably be revisiting the least. It's not too bad, but I just prefer all the other ones much more. Um, Raising Cain, this is a really good film actually, this came out in like 1990, um, John Lithgow delivers an amazing performance in this film. Lots of twists and turns here. Uh, Chud. This one wasn't quite what I was expecting. I've said that a few times actually with some of these films, but uh, with Chud, I was expecting it to be like a really out there, like crazy monster flick, but um, it actually played it uh, straight more than I was expecting. Um, I'm, I'm curious if whether, whether or not the second film, Chud 2, but the Chud is more sort of aligned with what I was expecting going in, but it's not too bad. Um, it's got Daniel Stern in it actually. Uh, Death Smiles on a Murderer. This one's directed by Joe D'Amato, which is the reason why I got this film, because I'm a fan of Anthropophagus, which is right here, and also Absurd. Oop, I almost punched that one. <laughs> um, Dawn of the Dead. This is the window box edition. Um, we do have the Second Sight um, 4K set that came out not long ago, uh, uh, but we'll probably hold on to this one because we love the film, and I actually still think the Arrow edition is awesome. Moving along, we've got Runaway Train. This is an awesome movie, actually. I got this one um, based on my dad's recommendation. John Voight and Eric Roberts are both great in it. And, um, yeah, very awesome movie. Hell Comes to Frogtown. Um, absolutely hilarious and a really good time. Starring Roddy Piper. Evil Ed. Really cool premise for a horror film. Basically, it's about a guy who edits horror films for a living and they slowly drive him insane, which that sold me on the film. But what we, what I ended up getting was not what I was expecting. Um, I don't want to spoil it too much, but yeah, it's it's definitely a weird film. I do like the costuming in that one, though, and like the, the practical effects. Um, Heathers. I was really late to watching this movie, but I, unsurprisingly, I did really enjoy it. Um, again, my dad and Sarah are huge fans of that movie, actually. The classic 12 Monkeys, um, Bruce Willis and um, Brad Pitt, of course. Still considering whether or not to upgrade to the Zavi exclusive Arrow Steelbook. William Friedkin, really, blah, blah, blah. William Friedkin's uh, To Live and Die in L.A. Uh, Willem Dafoe is menacing in this movie. A really good one, actually, from the mid-80s. Ronan, starring Rob De Niro and quite a few other people, actually. This is a, just a you know great 90s action flick. Um, not my favorite De Niro film, but it's definitely, you know, it's a fun blockbuster type thing. Uh, the Navigator, A Medieval Odyssey. Still even yet to watch this one. It's like a fantasy film from New Zealand, I think, actually. The Baby. Um, I've said this a few times already in this video, but got it based on the um, Arrow Video podcast as a recommendation. Um, yeah, I, they're, they're a really good podcast. I definitely suggest checking them out. Um, Vigil. This one's still sealed, so I haven't obviously checked this one out yet. Um, bit of a blind buy that one, so I'm yet to see what it's like. Class of Newcomb High. I got this one because I absolutely love The Toxic Avenger. Um, the only reason I haven't watched this one yet is because Sarah's brothers are insisting on watching this with me because they also like The Toxic Avenger. I had seen that film a bunch of times, and when I showed them that, they wanted to watch the other trauma stuff with me. So hopefully you'll be watching that one soon. That's also quite rare to find nowadays. 
And last on this row is Frank Henlotter's Brain Damage with the slipcover. This film is absolutely awesome. I rewatched this actually the other night. Um, if you like independent horror films that, that have a bit of, you know, wackiness to them, I definitely suggest checking out Brain Damage as well as Frank Henlotter's other films such as um, Basket Case and um, Frankenhooker, which you might see in a bit. And starting off this row, we've got Contamination with the limited edition slipcover. Yet another one that's really hard to find nowadays. I got this because it looked like a massive alien ripoff. Um, still yet to watch it though. Weird Science, obviously a great 80s comedy classic. 16 Candles. Pretty much everyone I know has seen this movie except for me. Um, Sarah got this one during one of Arrow's last sales and yeah, still need to watch that one with her. Daniel Isn't Real. Sarah and I are actually planning on watching this tonight. I think it stars Patrick Schwarzenegger, actually, which is really random. Dark Blue, starring Kurt Russell. Um, pretty average cop drama movie. I thought it was kind of forgettable. It wasn't terrible, but yeah, not the best. And I just, I remember not liking many of the characters in that movie. Um, James Kahn in uh, Thief, directed by Michael Mann. Got a handful of westerns here, so here we've got The Grand Jewel starring Lee Van Cleef. Texas Adios with Franco Nero. Got a double bill here actually with A Pistol for Ringo and The Return of Ringo. Really good value that edition. And also Day of Anger with Lee Van Cleef yet again. Got two uh, insect horror movies here. <laughs> um, this is Slugs. This is a fun time. I know insect horror is a bit of a hard sell to some horror fans, but if you are into that subgenre, Slugs is a really fun movie for sure. Squirm. Um, I've been wanting to track down this film for quite a while, actually. Um, again, this is another one that's really hard to find, and I believe it is out of print um, from both Arrow and Screen Factory. Um, I need a, still need to watch that one. I'm expecting, hoping it's as fun as um, Slugs. Moving along here. Sorry, it's reshuffling just for a sec. <laughs> um, Night Demon. I uh, still need to watch this one. It sounds kind of like it's going to be a ripoff of A Nightmare on Elm Street, which sounds like it's going to be good in my books. So we'll see how accurate that is. Um, the, uh, the Jackal. Oh, the Day of the Jackal, excuse me. I got this one because I believe I had seen like the remake with Richard Gere and Bruce Willis, which is, I know, really random, but um, I've heard this one's really good. I actually started watching this one, but I had to turn it off because um, I had some other commitments, so I need to go back and start that one again. Rollerball. Uh, this is an amazing movie. I, I really want to see this one again. I've only seen it maybe two or three times, but James Cairn is absolutely brilliant in this movie, and I love the world that they build in it, for sure. The Andromeda Strain. Um... I, th I know this is a pretty respected sci-fi movie, but it wasn't the most engaging for me personally, although I can see why sci-fi enthusiasts would really like it. Um, the Wild Geese. Got this one for my dad, actually. We, um, we are yet to watch it together because, you know, he's a big fan of Richard Harris and also Roger Moore, actually. So um, these are actually all three massive actors, Richard Harris, Roger Moore, and Richard Burton. So hoping it's pretty good. It's like a 70s action film, if I'm not mistaken. Moving along here. Sorry about all these falling over. Um, Tinto Brass's Caligula, starring Malcolm McDowell. I've had this film for ages in my collection. I just haven't actually sat down to watch it yet. Um, I don't know. What, I mean, I kind of know what to expect going in, but um, I've heard some pretty crazy things about that movie. Uh, Deranged, Confessions of a Necrophile. This is a sleazy movie. It actually stars Roberts Blossom, who you might know as the... Um, the guy from Home Alone, the guy who Kevin ends up being really afraid of, but he turns out to be a really nice dude. I know he's done other films apart from that, but that's how, that's where I recognized him from. Um, weird movie, but I actually quite liked it. But again, it's one that it's hard to recommend. Lords of Chaos. Um, I really like um, black metal and just metal music in general. So I found this film to be really interesting. Um, obviously the history that the, this movie is covering is embellished, but you know, if you are aware of the history surrounding this movie and what it's based on, I'd say it's worth a watch because it actually is tackled quite well. Um, Bound is a really cool 90s thriller movie. Jennifer Tilly is really good in it in particular. Uh, Burnt Offerings, still need to get around to seeing this one. And Flowers in the Attic. Moving along. Let me move these across a bit. So, sorry, I know it's probably driving you guys crazy. Sorry about the shuffling around. 
um, the guy of I love this slip cover. This stars Mark Hamill and that's Michael Berryman, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, on top there. Um, this is a weird movie. It's like the thing I remember thinking when I watched this movie was that it was like almost too uh, too serious or too adult for kids to watch, but <laughs> too childish for adults to watch. That's what I remember thinking, but I still actually really enjoyed it. And I don't mean to like talk down on the film at all because I think it's a really cool oddity, but um, I just remember being confused about what this film was trying to be, who this film was trying to be marketed to. Um, worth checking out just for like the weirdness of it. I said um, Derange was a grimy film, but this is truly a grimy movie. This is Deadbeat at Dawn, directed by Jim Van Beber. Um, very violent, cool, really low budget um I almost said horror film, but I guess it is a horror film in a way. But um, I really liked it because uh, there's some really interesting stylistic choices regarding the directing. Um, it's not going to be for everyone, but I actually really liked that movie. Island of Death. I think this is a video nasty, if I'm remembering correctly. Frankenhooker, um, directed by Frank Hanlotter, as I mentioned earlier. Um, I really like this one. Probably on par with Basket Case for me personally. Night of the Comet. Um, this is another one I got based off watching Cool Dude's videos actually back in the day. He'd always mentioned this movie and yet again I saw Arrow Video had a release of it so I took a chance on it. Um, both Sarah and I really enjoyed this one actually. Vamp. Really cool 80s stylish vampire movie. Miracle Mile. With Nail and I. This is a really awesome British comedy actually and has a, like some, some really like um, dramatic moments in it. I think the performances in particular, I'm blanking on their names, but they they both did a really great job on that one. Um, definitely recommend checking this out if you like your British comedy. It's supposed to be a British classic, um, but yeah, I hadn't known about it till I picked up this edition. Uh, Matinee, directed by Joe Dante and starring John Goodman. Uh, Climax, um, directed by Gaspar Noé. This is a good film, um, but like with most of... Um, his other films, this is going to be a hard one for me to rewatch. It's very, very chaotic, and I liked the use of music in the film, but um, it is a very draining watch. And then last on this row, we've got Hellgate and The Howling 2. So this is the last row of Arrow video titles before we move into Arrow Academy. First one here is Don't Torture a Duckling, directed by Lucio Fulci. Um, very solid yellow film from him, actually. I definitely recommend that one from the early 70s. Um, here we have Tideland, a mid-2000s film from Terry Gilliam. Um, the People Under the Stairs, I think this came out like 1991 or something. This one's directed by Wes Craven. Um, interesting movie, that one. Um, this one here is Hounds of Love. This is a pretty disturbing Australian, mo uh, Australian movie, actually. Sarah's a fan of this one. Um, yeah, very dark. Dead End Drive-In, still need to watch this one. Um, I really like the premise of it, if I'm remembering correctly. Basically, these people are at a drive-in theater and for whatever reason, they can never leave. So, curious to see what that one's all about. Um, the Endless, Sarah's been nagging me to watch this one for a long time. I really should get around to watching it because I liked the director's other work, uh, Synchronic, which came out recently. Thought that was pretty good, so I really do need to check this one out. Toby Hooper's The Fun House. I have a few of Toby Hooper's films, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, the Apprentice to Murder. Still need to check this one out. I believe this one stars Donald Sutherland. Animal Factory, starring Willem Dafoe and Edward Furlong, and that's Danny Trejo, I think, actually. Um, this is a prison movie from the early 2000s. It's pretty good, actually. It's not too bad. Um, had never heard of it before uh, picking up this Arrow edition, though. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. This is a really awesome, fun movie. Um, I really like the Elvira character, and I got introduced to her through this movie, actually. Um, not sure if I'll pick up the Zavi Steelbook yet. Sutra. It's a new pickup. And Satanic Panic. Um, Sarah actually picked this one out. She really liked it as well. Um, haven't seen it myself, though. Here we have uh, Buckaroo Bonsai, or sorry, The Adventures of Buckaroo Bonsai, starring Peter Weller. George Romero's Night Riders. I still need to get around to watching this one, actually. Um, it sounds really, really cool, actually. It's like a medieval film, but they're like, they have motorbikes or something. I, I don't really know a whole lot about it, um, but we got that like in a Blu-ray bundle we got sort of recently. But yeah, very interested in it. Um, the Incredible Shrinking Man. 
the stuff. This is awesome as well. Uh, I really want to see this one again because it has been a while since I last watched it, but it was a really, really fun time watching this one. Definitely recommend that one. A Rawhead Rex. Um, this one was pretty good. Um, I was hoping it would be a little bit better, but as a creature feature, it's pretty decent. Willy Dynamite. Still need to see this one. A couple of black exploitation films here. Um, Sheba Baby. Um, I have watched this one. I didn't quite like it um, as much as I liked the next one, which is Coffee. I thought this was a really, really good one. Um, if you're new to the black exploitation genre, this is a pretty safe one to check out. It's pretty good. Black Mama, White Mama. This one's still sealed. The Beast Within. This is an interesting body horror. Um, not body horror. Oh, like, there are elements of body horror in this, but uh, creature feature. Um, this is a really interesting creature feature film. Again, um, as with a lot of these films, I hadn't heard of it until I saw Arrow had released it and I took a chance on it and I actually quite liked it. Um, Cruising, starring Al Pacino. Um, a lot of fans of this film, I have to say, I was a little bit let down by this one. Uh, maybe I'll like it more on a rewatch, but yeah, it wasn't too keen on it. It's going to shuffle down. Crimes of Passion. Satan's Blade. Another slasher, obviously. Madhouse. This one was fairly average. Um, I thought I remember watching that one and thinking that the, one of the at least one of the performances is a little bit cringy, but I guess you can get that with some low budget slasher films. Um, Trapped Alive. The Mutilator. The Incredible Melting Man. I absolutely love this film. It's so silly, but the effects in this are really awesome. They're actually done by a young Rick Baker. Um, that's a lot of fun. Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Um, pretty dark tale, actually. Um, he's an interesting character, played by Warren Oates. Um, I've had that edition for a long time, but I only actually watched it for the first time earlier this year. I really liked it. A Fish Called Wanda. This movie is absolutely hilarious. This is another comedy that I grew up watching. Um, performances from everyone in this. Um, performances are stellar. In particular, Kevin Klein as Otto. He, I mean, I think he got an Oscar for that one, actually. Or at least a nomination. Um, very well deserved. And the last area video title is The Bloodthirsty Trilogy with the slipcase. Um, still need to get around to checking these films out. So this is the start of our Arrow Academy collection. Obviously, it's not as extensive as our Arrow Video collection, but we do have some cool titles, such as this limited edition set of Kislowski's Decalogue. Um, we, this is a very rare box set. It's very hard to find nowadays. But again, like with so many of the other box sets, we've got a great deal. Um, yeah, the, these films, I, I guess, you know, it's a mini series, I guess, technically, but um, all of the 10 episodes are just absolutely fantastic. I really love Decalogue. And we also have the follow-up box set from Arrow Academy, um, Cinema of Conflict, four films by Krzysztof Kislowski. I haven't checked out these films yet, but I love Decalogue and I love the Three Colors trilogy, so I'm sure I'll like those too. Here we have the Family Values box set from Hirokazu Koreeda. Um, Arrow also have a re-release of this in a standard edition, which is really cool of them. Eight Hours Don't Make a Day. This is my first um, release. Uh, uh, this is my first film uh, by Raina Werner Fassbinder. I know this is also a miniseries. I shouldn't have said film, but Fassbinder is one of those really famous directors that I've been wanting to learn more about. So I figured this miniseries was a good place to start. And because also Arrow had that for a really cheap price, I don't think they sold many copies of that because I still frequently see this very discounted. Um, here we've got the three Woody Allen box sets. Um, these are also out of print now. Um, the sets themselves, uh, they don't really have many special features. I think there's, I read somewhere that Woody Allen doesn't really like doing them for some weird reason. Um, but I like to watch these films with my dad because he's a big Woody Allen fan. Um, I haven't seen all of these films, obviously. I mean, this one I'm about to show you is still sealed, but the ones that I've seen, I've thought were pretty good. Um, some are definitely better than others. Um, but yeah, these, I, I figured, you know, since I know my dad's a fan, it'd be good to watch them with him. Um, but yeah. Here is the four film noir classics. I believe this is a reissue of a box set that is now out of print. So it's cool that they re-released it in that box set there. I don't know why this is here. This is a Stan Lone Tells, not a box set, obviously, but this is Cinema Paradiso. Um, I think they recently did a 4K um, release of this, but I'm probably, I'll probably just stick with the Blu-ray. Here we've got the Shohei Imamura set. Um, can't really take that out right now. Um, 
I know I've got to speed this video along, but it's a quick thing about Zavi. So I ordered this from Zavi, I pre-ordered it, and same issue. They didn't have stock of it for a while. Then they shipped it out and it didn't turn up for like two months. Um, I contacted them. They were almost going to not give me my money back, even though they had taken my payment and I hadn't gotten the item. They eventually gave me my money back, still didn't have the item. And then a month after that, it arrived. So um, I technically got this box set for free, but it was not worth the headache of dealing with Zavi. Um, yeah, just interesting story with that one. Glad to have it though, because um, Imamura is also another director I've been wanting to learn more about. Um, the Paolo and um, Vittorio Taviani box set. This is also one um, that is uh, frequently discounted. I'm not sure if it's out of print yet, but um, you should still be able to get your hands be able to get your hands on this one. Just gonna put that to the side. Okay, some um, back into the regular editions now. So One Eyed Jacks. I, ha I haven't had this one for very long, so I haven't seen it yet. But um, this is a Marlon Brando film. Heard pretty good things about this one. Irma Vep. Le Grand Buffet. The premise of this sounds absolutely insane, which is why I got it. Haven't checked it out yet, but um, it sounds like it's going to be a kind of grotesque film. Robert Altman's Images. This one's still sealed, but um, this is hard to be a god. Hard to be a god. Sweet Smell of Success. Um, this is a brilliant film. Tony Curtis and Burt Lancaster are both excellent in this film. Um, really regret not watching that one sooner. Um, very, very good, that one. Being John, Being John Malkovich. I also really like this film. Um, if you have, if It's probably one of the more popular titles that Arrow Academy have released, um, but definitely worth the pick up because it is a really unique film. And The Apartment. This has a box set that is also out of print, which I didn't, which I don't have in the collection, obviously. Uh, maybe one day, but yeah, this film is brilliant too. So this is the last lot of films on the shelf. I'm literally on my stomach on the floor right now. That's how low to the ground I am. Um, here we've got The Manchurian Candidate starring uh, Frank Sinatra. Children of Men, um, another popular title that Arrow Academy put out. Um, this is an amazing film. It's one of Sarah's favorites as well. I know she's a fan of the book that it's based on. Yeah, Three Women, directed by Robert Altman. This is The Conformist, directed by Bernardo Bertolucci. Um, I really, really like this one. In particular, I thought the cinematography was beautiful. As it was in Night of the Hunter, um, a title that I'd heard a lot about, but I'd never seen. Finally picked it up, and yeah, it's definitely worth the hype. Um, Robert Mitchum's performance in this is unforgettable. He's a very menacing character. Gosford Park. The cast in this is absolutely insane. You should see, look up how all the different actors are that are in this. It's crazy. Um, good film. Uh, directed by Robert Altman. Sorry, I don't know if I just said that, but yeah. Rafifi. Still need to check this one out. I believe this is a French film. I've had it for a long time. I just hadn't seen it. Um, Dr. Jekyll and Miss Osborne. Demon Lover. This is a very weird movie. Um, I did quite like it, although I remember feeling quite mixed on it when I first watched it. Um, it's a hard film to, to dissect, if I'm being honest, but um, worth checking out for sure. The Killing, uh, directed by Stanley Kubrick, and it also includes another film of his, uh, Killer's Kiss. Um, I really liked The Killing, actually. It's, very, uh, it's a very fun movie. Um, the Hunt, starring Mads Mikkelsen. This is like a heart-wrenching movie. Um, extremely well acted and, yeah, one that is hard to rewatch, but, you know, for good reasons. And last on the shelf is The Long Goodbye, directed by Robert Altman yet again, um, starring Elliot Gould. I really love this film. Um, I've only seen it the once, but Sterling Hayden as well. He'll, he um, gives a great performance and I just really like the story that is explored in this. I think it's really interesting. These last four films I accidentally made the mistake of not having on the shelf. Um, so Horror Express, I'm actually in the middle of watching this. That's why I forgot to put it back on the shelf for the video. Uh, really liking it so far. I'm going to finish it after I stop recording. And these are three more Arrow Academy titles. So here we've got The Third Murder. Um, I actually really enjoyed this one. It's a court drama film from uh, Japan. And yeah, I, I made this comment in a previous video, but it was great seeing how the Japanese court system worked, or at least how this film portrayed it. Um, it was cool to see like the parallels between that court system and uh, what more um, the court system here in Australia and more Western ones, if that makes sense. 
um, Departures. Still need to check this one out, but I've heard rave reviews of this one. And last but not least is The Human Condition, directed by Masaki Kobayashi. I need to find the time to watch these ones because it is quite a journey. There's three films in here and they're all very lengthy, but obviously these films are supposed to be absolutely incredible, so looking forward to checking these ones out. So that's the end of the video. Thanks so much, guys, for watching this. Um, as I said, I know this would have been a really long video, so I really do appreciate you watching it. Um, if you have any th uh, recommendations for other Arrow video titles, I know it probably seems like I don't need any more in my collection because li there's literally an entire shelf dedicated to it. But regardless, I always love hearing your recommendations. Um, I don't know if I, s I can't remember if I said it during the shelf by shelf, but you know, I have plenty of their future stuff on pre-order. I'm going to be getting more and more box sets, so I assume a video like this will probably happen again in another two years' time. But uh, regardless, I hope you enjoyed seeing the overview. Um, yeah, thanks so much guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.